His interest is in human rights. He has fought for the release of several remand prisoners, a family person with a difficult background. We uncover the true identity of human rights lawyer, Francis Xavier Susu, on everyday people. My mom was a victim of Trokushi. Uh, she was a slave girl to the shrine. And then my dad also became a victim of alcoholism. When he lost his job um, or his belongings in 1982, after he was repatriated from Nigeria. Uh, we were six in number, plus one adopted child. So in all, we were nine as a family. And now all nine of us needed to work for the family to survive, even as children. So our eldest sister, who was supposed to lead the enterprise, could not do so because she was blind. She wasn't born blind. She only had measles. My parents did not even understand the medical conditions because both of them were uneducated. And they didn't even have the money, you know, to take her to the hospital. So she became blind. And um, I had to work as a, a child to support the family so we used to sell everything sellable. Uh, I used to push trucks, I used to sell kerosene, I used to sell everything just so I will be able to survive. The first time I began to school because of the difficult background was when I was eight years old. You can imagine how people were screaming and shouting at Accra Newtown, Mofracha Preparatory School. We had to endure the, if you like, the shame and the humiliation to be able to go through. At that material time, I knew that poverty, inferiority, complexity, um, you know, were all chasing me and I needed to do something out of my life. And the only way I could do that was through education. It was at a junior high school that I became a complete street kid because when my parents were leaving uh, Taifa Burkina and as at that time Taifa Burkina was a complete bush so if I went to live at Taifa Burkina it would mean that I have to quit school but I needed to be in school so I had to stay at Newtown and the only way I could do that was to live in the market one of the most significant things that I remember that happened when I was in the junior high school was the night before our final exams. My uniform was wet because I didn't have money to sleep inside and I slept outside that night. And I wore the wet uniform that morning to go and write the final paper. And it was a very, very pathetic scene. A teacher, Mrs. Ruby Ahi, who was then my grand teacher who encouraged me oftentimes, uh, you know, invited me and I was with her doing house chores for her over the weekends whilst I waited to go back to the senior high school. So Mrs. Rubiani arranged for me to get admission at St. John's Grammar School. Indeed, apart from my initial admission fee that I paid at St. John's Grammar School, I could never pay anything. And at the point of dropping out of school, that was when the village of Folk came in. After St. John's Grammar School, I managed to get a scholarship to do a one-year IT training with NIT. Then after NIT, I gained admission to the University of Ghana to do a bachelor's degree in sociology and archaeology. When I finished, I went back to the village of Folk to help the kids during my national service. It was at that point that I met with Don Barnett. He's an elder at the Memorial Road Church of Christ at Oklahoma. He decided to sponsor my law school education. I applied and gained admission into the University of Ghana to do the LLB. Um, then after the LLB, um, gained admission into the Ghana School of Law where I did the, uh, the BL and then got called to the bar in, in 2010. Now married to uh, Felicia Joakunedu uh, Susu, and we are blessed with two beautiful kids, Klenam and Kadi. Um, Klenam means shine for me, and Kadi means light.